Hey everyone, welcome to a new video. So in this video we are going to start recreating those visuals. Let's give it a look. So this is a Max for Life device that I've created a couple days ago and I actually posted it for free on my Patreon, link in the description. The visuals are being triggered by MIDI input, so exactly as we did in the last two tutorials, MIDI nodes input is triggering, uh, the, is triggering the visuals to do something and we got this like 2D uh, shooter game, like some spa spaceship stuff. So in this video I'm going to start to explain you how I did that and maybe in future episodes we're going to expand on this. As always, as you are cruising in, a like to this video and subscribe to the channel will be much appreciated. And without any further ado, I guess let's start. So in this video we're going to, I think we're going to make the star explosion bit. Uh, probably not go any further, but let's see. Okay, let's go into it. All right, so we're going to start from the very scratch. Uh, as always, let's create the max MIDI effect. So first of forward, this video is going to be much more advanced than the previous ones I made. But all the stuff I'm going to do, I've already explained this several times in a lot of other tutorials. So if you find yourself lost, check out my website, check out the list of tutorials I've got there. And there's surely going to be some of those that will make everything more clear for, uh, for you about what's going on in this video. And if you don't find those tutorials, then just ask me in the comments. So let's open this device, just a freshly new device which I've just created. Here is our Max console. And what I'm going to do is to first of all zoom in and then also I'm going to get rid of all these uh, comments here, right? Okay, so first thing we're going to need again is a cheat world with the floating one so the window doesn't go behind the patcher we are going to set the size to 320 by 240 just so it's not too big we're going to enable it by default and we're going to put full scale anti-aliasing and there we got it here is my window i'm going to check the frame rate by creating a gtfps gui object there it is oh you know what since the uh, refresh rate of the um, Apple screen it's variable it's not like fixed 120 because it's used this pro motion technology or whatever so it's going to variate between something and something actually what I want to do is to desync it from uh, desync the um, rendering of the uh, cheat world from the refreshing of the screen so to do that we just set the sync zero uh, the sync attribute to zero, so now it's going to be to a steady 60 frames per second, which is much better than getting it oscillating between 80 and 100 and whatnot. Cool. Uh, I guess I have to save that, and I'm going to save it as a space shooter to one in the max device uh, folder, which Ableton already provides for us. And uh, cool. So we're going to do the bit about the stars we said, right? Even going to put that in our uh, device space, it, it doesn't really, it doesn't really matter for the moment. We are going to anyway uh, work in presentation mode, as we did in the last video. So in this video, I'm going to do the bit about the stars explosion thing. So this is basically going to be a little particle system, like you will find it in Unity or or every other rendering engine. So we're going to make a custom one. And this is going to look like this. We need first a JIT matrix, uh, which is going to have three planes, float 32 and 100 cells. Now the number of cells, it gives us the number of elements we will have in our particle system, the number of stars. So we're going to use JIT gen for that. And don't you worry if you see the frame rate going a bit down. Um, I think this is because Ableton, when you edit a device, kind of uh, the refresh rate on the JIT world goes down for some reason. But when you actually finish to edit it and use it, then the, the, the frame rate is pretty consistent at 60 frames per second. So, okay, we need a JIT gen to manipulate these matrices, these matrix data. So we're going to just uh, create some uh, little physics for our particles inside JIT gen. And actually, we want to give this matrix a name, which we call position. 
So this is the position for our particles, which we need to pass from frame to frame. So in order to do that, we need to have matrices which have a name. So if the matrix has the same name, uh, this is going to retain the position from the previous frame and send it as the input for the next frame to JITGen. And if this is unclear, I got a video on uh, this uh, exactly that. Uh, maybe I will put uh, the link in one of these uh, cool YouTube um, uh, popping up things or something like that if I manage. But anyway, this is already explained in detail in some other place. So cool. And then we want to basically render our our stars, which for now on I'm going to call sprites, because a sprite is like a little image that we find inside the games. Um, so we're going to render it using a GGL multiple and a GGL video plane. Now the GGL multiple will take a certain number of inputs and every input correspond to a GL param. Now we want to influence the position of our target, we want to influence the scale, and I guess we want to influence the rotate XY Z attribute. Okay, so this means that if we connect now a GGL video plane to that object, and you can see the window is being filled by a black square, uh, the CGL video plane, we set it to automatic zero. And this is going to be rendered then by our CGL multiple, not anymore by itself. So if we connect the uh, matrix to the first input of CGL multiple, which is going to be the position input, uh, we will modify the position by uh, setting it inside the cells of this matrix, this matrix called position. So we're going to set the cells in this matrix with it gen. So first of all, let's connect this uh, metro here, that this bang, continuously uh, output 60 times per second to this JIT matrix, which goes inside JIT gen. And let's make a little experiment. Uh, we need actually, you know what we need to uh, first set the scale for these particles, uh, for those stars, or um, otherwise we are not going to be able to see them. So what I'm going to do is to simply use another JIT gen because I want to kind of keep those JIT gens separated. This is going to be to set the scale and the rotation and maybe the color. And this one is going to be for the particle uh, mechanics. So inside this, uh, actually, let's give this GGN a title. With T, we can uh, set a title, and we're going to call it scale, uh, scale plus uh, rotation, something like this. And this other one is going to be particles mechanics. OK. So inside this second JIT gen here, uh, let's uh, set, uh, let's create another output and let's give it a, a comment. And this is going to be the scale. You can give comments to JIT gen outputs and inputs. So to remember what's their purpose, so this is going to be the position. And so actually let's set first a fixed scale of 0 0.1 for those uh, for those particles, we're going to connect these here. Cool. So you can see now we got the video plane and it's scaled at 0 0.1. So it's like a little tiny black square. And let's now uh, change the position for those uh, uh, particles. So now there are 100 of them that are overlapped on top of each other. So let's change their position so we can see that they are 100. And we're going to do that inside this JIT gen. I think what we're going to do is to say that uh, we are going to apply some random force to them. So we can create the random numbers for each plane of the input matrix with the noise generator. So we can, this gives us number between zero and one. So we can scale zero and one between minus one and one. And let's actually then multiply that by a very small value. So this is going to be the force we apply to our particles. What have I done? And so what we're going to do is to simply sum them to D. 
these and we shall start to see let's make this bigger we shall start to see our particles moving exactly so at every frame they will get a different uh, they will get a different um, force so they will uh, keep moving in all random direction every frame a different random direction now since we want to render like stars or something let's uh, add the texture to those black squares so let's actually assign to our video plane the color white uh, this is not going to influence it at the moment but maybe later it's going to be useful and let's create a ggl texture and let's give it the name of uh, star text and we want to uh, drop some image inside this texture so we can use a drop file but you know we can actually use live drop file which is even cooler because it kind of remembers the latest file that was dropped into it although this is still a bit unclear to me how this works i have to i have to check this better but it kind of remembers the last file that was dropped into it and i think when you save it is going to recall it or when you recreate the device is going to recall it something like that so let's give to this GGL video plane the texture uh, star text. Right, so now the texture is empty, so it's going to show us an empty texture. But we can drop something, for example, I got here an image of uh, a star. And by the way, all the sprites that I'm going to use in this video are taken from uh, the Kenny website, kenny.nl. Uh, put a link in the description, it's a very cool website with a lot of um, assets for video games. So I just dropped an image inside it and it doesn't really seem to be working. And okay, for some reason was somehow not uh, outputting my file, the drop object. So yeah, as I said, I still have to check really how this thing works. But there we go. Uh, once I resave the patch, once I save the patch, then it starts working. So here we got our texture, I just dropped it here. So now all our video planes, our particles have the sprite attached. As you can see, uh, they have a black background, but if we set blend enable to one, this is going to go away. But as you can see, they are still kind of uh, uh, overlapping with each other. So we also have to set the depth enable zero. So the depth is not going to um, be, make any difference anymore. So we can now we can, uh, so now they appear all without any sort of border or overlap. Cool. Now let's give them kind of a more um, nice movement. So kind of this explosion sort of uh, movement. So we're going to do like this. We need to have some sort of lifetime for those particles because when they finish their lifetime, then they're going to have this explosion force applied and otherwise they're just going to go in the same direction that they received when they were created. Oh, you know what? In the JIT world, let's actually set ortho 2 because we are anyway working in 2D uh, coordinates, so we don't want to have the z-axis, we don't want to have any perspective, so we set orthographic projection. Uh, this means that it's um, uh, not going to take the z, the z into account our program. And this is what we want because we are working in two dimensions. Um, so I was saying we need a lifetime. So let's create another JIT matrix and actually call it lifetime. And we need to copy it because this is going to go inside. Let's actually send it inside our second input here. And inside our JIT gen, let's actually give comments to those inputs. So this is the position. And this is the output of the position. And this is the lifetime. I wonder if I can just write C or if it's going to complain. I mean, it doesn't really complain. Yeah, but it's not a valid attribute yet. So let's just write comment so it's better. Um, so cool. Uh, we want to output this lifetime. So we have it as an input for the next frame. And every frame we want to advance of... Uh, 0.01 actually no you know what every frame we're going to subtract a little quantity from this lifetime so if we now start to uh, if we connect this lifetime output here to the matrix oh and I wrote the wrong name here is actually lifetime on this output 
So you see, if we go now with the mouse on top of these uh, outputs, we can see what's the actual uh, uh, connection inside, how it's labeled. So position here and lifetime here. So let's do like this. Let's actually create a bang two. So we got two bangs. The first bang is going to go inside the lifetime and the second bang is going to go inside the position. So if we now check what's going on inside this lifetime matrix, we can see that these are numbers that are decreasing uh, below zero continuously because um, uh, it's always being subtracted 0.001 at each frame. So what we want to do is to actually set these values uh, by default to some sort of number between zero and one, and we're going to do that with a JIT noise. So let's do this, cool. And then we're going to wrap them uh, here between zero and one. So once this goes below zero, it's going to go back to one. And once it's going above one, it's going to go back to zero, but this doesn't really matter. Okay, so you can see Actually, we don't need the three planes for that. We need a single plane because this is just lifetime. It's just a single value. It's uh, not a vector. It's just a number. Like age is just a number, basically. So inside here, we want to say when this is lesser than one, when the lifetime is lesser than one, that's what it means. When lifetime is lesser than, uh, sorry, than zero, why I say the one is actually zero. Why lifetime, when lifetime is less than zero, then apply these forces. Otherwise, don't apply any forces to the particles. So we can do that like this by using this uh, uh, ternary operator. So if this is true, then apply that. If this is false, then don't apply anything. So what we will see now, let's make the force a bit bigger. What we will see now is that when the particle's lifetime is less than zero, then we have this force, but just for a single frame, then nothing is going to happen anymore. So actually we want to create a new element here, which is going to be the velocity. So we need to transport another number from frame to frame, and this is going to be the velocity. So let's go inside JITGen again, and let's create another input, input three, and this is going to be the velocity of our particle. So basically the velocity is going to be the result of all the forces applied to a particle at each frame. So we need to output that as well, because we want to have it as a, uh, an input in the next frame. So we want to make this feedback system with the matrices. So let's copy that and then call, let's call that velocity. And let's copy that again. Uh, this thing we can put maybe up here, right? So this goes into the third inlet. This goes from the third output. And instead of having a bang two, let's have a bang three. So we bang all these matrices at each frame. And for this noise, we can actually attach load bang here. So it's going to be filled as soon as we load the device. Cool. And uh, cool. So inside here, we want to say that the velocity, actually we want to move this stuff uh, uh, not to the position, but to the velocity side. So when this is less than zero, my lifetime is less than zero then we want to have that the velocity is actually going to be uh, the noise values. Otherwise, it's simply going to be the previous velocity and then the previous velocity is going to become the velocity for the next frame. And the velocity is what we are going to sum with our position. So exactly, as you can see, when the particles uh, finish their lifetime, they get uh, uh, sent um, away. They get uh, this force applied onto them until they actually disappear. So what we also want to say is that when the lifetime is smaller than zero, then we actually want to reset those particles at the center. So let's just create a, a vector with three zeros. So this is going to be our reset position. 
Let's give it a try. Okay, so as you can see, when the particles finish their lifetime, they're going to uh, start back from the center. So let's see if this is actually working. Yeah, it looks like it's working. Uh, now, this velocity is a bit too much, so let's just reset it to 0 0.01. Okay, so that's a bit too few. And what we want to do is to maybe also give it a, a bit of attrition, so we simulate kind of air resistance. And to do that, we just need to reduce the velocity at each frame by a certain amount. So this simulates kind of the uh, friction of the air. Cool. And uh, what we can do is also to scale those particles according to their lifetime. So if they are uh, getting older, they basically get smaller and smaller until they disappear. So uh, let's also make them a bit smaller. So let's go inside here, the scale thing. Uh, let's actually input our lifetime inside the scale gen. And what we want to do is to multiply the scale that comes inside by 0 0.1. And we're going to pass it as the scale. Right. So when they get old, then they will basically disappear. And also let's make them slightly actually half the size by setting their by multiplying the scale, which is comes uh, the lifetime, which is a uh, it is between zero and one, right? Because we wrapped it. So between zero and one, and now it's going to be between zero and 0 0.05. So it gives us nice and small particles. Uh, what happened here? Ah, I just disconnected that for some reason. Okay, cool. So the initial force here is a bit too strong. We can set it back to something smaller. And the lifetime is too long, so we should make them die faster. Okay, cool. So we have this sort of uh, uh, very cool explosion thing going on at the moment. Nice. Uh, we can even give them to each of them a random color, which I think we can do uh, simply by creating a jit noise with four planes. Flutter 32, 100 cells, and we need to give it another parameter here to our GGL multiple, which is going to be color. So we just connect these here, and this color is going to be multiplied by the matrix. Oh, but notice that actually the alpha, it's also going to be between zero and one in this case. So that's not what we want. So let's do like this. Let's actually create a new input here in JITGEN. We could do it in several ways, but Let's do like this. This is, by the way, the position. Uh, so let's create a new input and call it a color. Or uh, actually noise, because this is actually what's coming in, just random numbers. And we can switch uh, x, y, and z as a just three random numbers. And then we can concat that to one. So the number one is going to be the fourth plane. Oh, but actually this, uh, uh, this will not work because this uh, matrix has only three planes as an input. So that's not going to work. Okay, so sorry about that. Abort this plan. Not going to work. What we need to do is to simply... Uh, we could do it in several ways. Let's just create a, another cheat gen here. Maybe this is kind of the, not the best way to do it, not the most fast way because we need to code a bit more, but uh, we can actually do it like that. Somehow I don't get any other idea at the moment. There's surely some better ways to do that. So what we want to do is to do that. What I was saying before, concat a number one to that. And let's check what's going on. And it's not working, I guess, because the... And this was not working because I should have wrote it like this, like concat whatever comes inside in the first inlet to whatever comes inside in the second inlet, and we can override those values with uh, arguments to this. So yeah, one, one, that's the way to write it. Oops, I just closed the device by mistake. Let me open it again. And as you can see, the uh, stars have no textures. Let me drop again a little star texture here. Oh, they also have no color, actually. This is more the problem. Right. 
So we can actually um, send a load bang to that as well. Right. And actually, if I understood correct how this live drop thing works, uh, we should be able to just have already the, the texture inside. Yes. So if even if I recreate the device, it has already the texture inside because this is how this live drop works. It kind of uh, re-triggers the last thing that was input into it, which is in this case my file called color underscore star. Uh, so this is pretty cool. All right. Uh, okay, so let's keep it short. Um, we just missed now the rotation for the stars. So let's add it inside here. We already got the lifetime, so the lifetime we are going to need. And we are going to uh, create a new output, which is called rotate xyz. And we're going to use the lifetime multiplied by, I don't know, something like 700. Connect it here, connect it uh, here. Actually, let's create a vector because we're going to just rotate the zeta axis. So we need to connect to the third um, input of a vector. And if we connect this to rotate x6 exactly, we can see our matrix is rotating very beautifully. Uh, I would like to have some random values also to make them all starting rotating from a different point and actually they should also kind of all start from a different point in the lifetime and somehow this was not working with this load bang and I guess this is because uh, our JIT gen works. So what we should do is to actually do that. Okay, I think it works like this. So we should first send a bang to the initial matrix, then send our matrix here, and then a bang again here. And this should now make it work, I think. This is our strange quirk of uh, JIT gen. So cool, uh, this is working. So we now, I wanted to have a random point of rotation for that. <clears throat> for our stars, so we can go inside the JIT gen again and create a new input and call it noise again. This is going to be our noise. So let's connect this noise as it is here. And we're going to switch uh, just a single component like the red component. And we're going to multiply it by, I don't know, 1000. And we're going to sum that to this rotation, since anyway the rotation is always capped between 0 and 360, or minus 360 and 360. So in this way we are just adding a random value to each of them, so they will all start rotating from a different point. Uh, is this what's happening? And now I actually think they all start from a different point. The rotation is just that uh, they rotate pretty fast, so it's not so easy to to dis discern that. If we want them to rotate slower, we can just change this number here, this multiplication. Let's maybe try with 500. Cool. So let's go back to our animation. So let's give back the position name to this matrix so the particles can uh, keep uh, flowing away. Cool, and that's really nice. But we wanted to have this a uh, bit more like an explosion, not a continuous flow of particles. So what we want to do is to actually not set these two, not set wrap here. So just make them go uh, forever into negative numbers with a lifetime. So we want to say that this is, uh, if this is less than zero, then we want them to completely disappear off screen. So let's actually do like this. Let's set this to zero. And instead of wrapping them, let's clip them between zero and one. Okay, so we can say if this is actually less or equal than zero. Exactly, so the, the um, lifetime will be always zero basically. And with this bang here, we can then restore the lifetime to some numbers. So when we do that, they should 
actually reappear from the center and start exploding. So we can see that the position exactly. So when this is true, their position is going to be zero. Exactly. So this is now our explosion. And this is uh, almost uh, more or less how I did it in my patch that I shared. Actually, my patch is a bit more messy, but the sense is the same. So cool. Uh, that's it. Uh, in the next videos, we're going to add the starship and then the shootings of the starship is going to be very cool. Uh, let's change a bit this background color, which is a bit dull. Let's maybe make it kind of space, blue space, something like that. And there we go. There we go. We can add the GGL pass with some FX name Bloom HD. HQ, sorry, not HD. What am I saying? Okay. So let's see. Let's make the threshold a bit lower than one, like 0 0.8. So we should now see our particles glowing. And <laughs> there they go. Pretty cool. Pretty cool stuff. Okay. So let's stop it here. I hope you liked it. If you did like it, then please subscribe to the channel, follow the uh, like to the video, check my Patreon and support the channel by joining more than 400 people last time I checked, which is pretty crazy. Lots of people in this Patreon uh, is awesome. It's awesome, kind of overwhelming, crazy cool. So yeah, check that out and um, um, you can interact with me then on Discord and uh, check all my patches, there's a lot of stuff. So cool. Uh, thank you a lot for following and I will see you in the next video. Ciao. Thank you.